What's up guys, Brian back to talk about some X-Men Apocalypse, a movie we are looking excited to see. We basically put the trailers together and talk about them to di diagnose those things and talk about them, scrutinize them a little bit. But basically we're just going to talk about it pretty quickly. So it starts off with X-Men Mansion, a uh, lovely shot of there, Magneto talking with Xavier about something, about how, how you know, whoever attacks the school and you got to be afraid. Xavier says whoever he feels sorry for anyone who attacks the school, which I would be too. Um, I wouldn't want to mess with the school of those kids, the gifted youngsters. Jean Grey has a premonition of apocalypse. She freaks out of all the craziness that she sees of things to come. We're using her uh, abilities, Xavier says, calm down, Jean. You know, that's what he's got to do. But, you know, she's right, of course, to see what comes next. Angel is some reason fighting Nightcrawler. We're not sure there's a cage fight there. I don't know what's trying to go on here. Sorry for the blurry picture there. But it was just showing that Nightcrawler is about to vanish. Boom. So he's Angel before he's Archangel. I believe his name's Warren or something too, but <laughs> Nightcrawler is back. He's got a sweet outfit there. Um, so why are they fighting? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out a little bit there, but there's two good characters. You're back. Nightcrawler, we haven't seen you since X-Men 2, but you are a big part of the X-Men and Marvel Universe, so I'm glad you're back. We see Egypt, of course. It's where Apocalypse is from. He's supposed to be the first mutant, and I guess that's where it was in Egypt. Um, I don't know how to say that name, but it's some ritual to turn that guy into Apocalypse, so I'm not even going to try to do a pronounce that. That is Poe Dameron there from Star Wars, looking good. What a, what a big role of Apocalypse and in the Star Wars franchise. So good luck to that guy. Energy is coming from somewhere, probably in the pyramid, I don't know. To make it happen, you got the Apocalypse turning into it, which is pretty sweet. You know, they're transforming him into one, I don't know, to get his power to be a super mutant. Um, you see there the final character of him looking there, trying to get his four horsemen. Apocalypse is born, moving on to go get there. It starts with Aurora Monroe, probably somewhere in Africa. I know that's uh, the origin of Storm, which is pretty awesome. I don't know about that haircut, though, but next they probably go after Psylocke. I don't know if sure they're, what they're doing there, but there she is, Olivia Munn. Psylocke is going to be a pretty cool addition. So he's going, to, he has Storm, it starts with that most likely, and then he's probably going to get Psylocke and then Magneto or something, or Archangel, I don't know what the, what the there, but you can see Storm and Psylocke when they're talking to Magneto, and Magneto seems to be in some metal plant or whatever, and he's probably totally against the idea from Apocalypse at first. But it's pretty sweet. He makes him drop with his eyes on there too. There's the people around Magneto. So I don't know where this comes in with the, the scene here in the woods. I don't know who that woman is. But is he dealing with the wrath of Apocalypse? Is Storm causing a big chaos there? So I don't know. Does he turn his way around it? That he, does he have to join Apocalypse because he's afraid? Why, why does he join Apocalypse? I don't know. He's, he's got to be against it at some point of it. But eventually he joins him and says so he wants to make him pay or something. So I don't know what he does. Does he brainwash him? I don't, I don't know. That's what I seem to think Apocalypse does Archangel is born I don't we don't know the the story of that but you see Professor X and Havoc are the main group there talking to Moira McTaggart she's back so it's Professor X Havoc and Miss McTaggart and they're basically looking at the four horsemen death war pestilence and famine and they kind of give you the ideas did the Bible get it from him or whatever so a little stuff there blurry scenes of Cerebro with someone coming out is it a woman it looks like Jean Grey from here but Xavier, if you slow it down, there's only one person that goes in with Cerebro there. So is that a different part of it? And who's that one person? Xavier using Cerebro probably to figure out what Apocalypse is doing or whatever back in the mansion. There's a couple people there, so they're different scenes. Uh, he's never felt this power before. But look at the eyes between the two. He's got these black eyes, and then they get gigantic in there, too. And his mouth is kind of funny. If you go back and forth there, it's kind of, kind of funny. But something happens in Cerebro where, you know, they attack the mansion. As you can see, Mystique... Moyer McTaggart, Beast, Havoc, and Xavier there. And you can see that Havoc is trying to energy blast or something, what's going on in Cerebro. So I don't know if that has to do with Apocalypse or, or some power that's going in there. Are they just breaking up Cerebro? Um, Apocalypse shows up with the four horsemen. This has to be after. So if you look at Havoc's chest, it's after energy blast. Xavier has to be passed out in the chair. They're probably trying to wake him up, but Magneto grabs him and brings him to them and they're going to do something with them but I don't know what what that's going to have entail um, Xavier is rumored to die in it but I don't know if that's going to happen he gets beat up by Apocalypse that's for sure he clearly throws the punch and Xavier doesn't have stand a chance against Apocalypse he transforms which is awesome because that's what happened in the cartoon that I grew up with and it's cool to see them going back to it but he throws him around a little bit that's kind of the two different trailers combined it's a pretty cool scene 
You see Xavier staying alive, trying to get away. Does he get away? Does he survive? I don't know what happens as he go into a, a state, but at the end he's bald, so he has to live somehow. Quicksilver returns for this movie. He was awesome, good good addition to the to the cast. I liked him in the last X Men movie. Uh, Sweet Room, I believe it's in the nineteen eighties, nineteen eighty three, I believe is the time frame for it. Ten years from the other X Men movie. Uh, he's talking with his mom saying, you know i got to get out more, but his dad is Magneto. So I'm know. I like that Quicksilver better as well. You see the gifted, the school for gifted youngsters. It will be operational there too because it was 10 years later after everything happened. You see Jubilee. There we go from the cartoon. We don't know if she'll be a part or anything there too, but you see her for a little bit in the trailer. Quicksilver is there with Beast, and there's a bunch of kids, so I'm guessing they're at the school, the mansion for gifted youngsters, or whatever you want to call it. I hope we see more of the mansion before they destroy it, because you can see that it clearly gets destroyed. Um, I like the mansion. It's a huge part of the X-Men universe. Quicksilver's running through. I love this uh, scenes with him. It's pretty awesome, especially from the other movie. He's running through to save somebody. You can see he's running as the floor explodes in there, too. He's got to be going to save somebody. It's got to be Gene or someone upstairs or even just random kids, I don't know, that are stuck up there. So we'll see who he goes to save, but he'll be a big part of the, uh, the movie, which is great. The school is blowing up. So, uh, you know, in the cartoons and in the X-Men universe, they have to rebuild the school. You know, I, I know at least once. So I guess Apocalypse is against education there. Sorry, bad joke. I know. But you see that they have to rebuild it. They have to rebuild the, the mansion. The mansion is such a huge part of the X-Men universe. They have to beat Apocalypse and go forward with that. We finally get to see Scott Summers, a young Cyclops there. He is brothers with Havoc. Um, so we'll get to see hopefully that connection a little bit. The school is destroyed there, as you can see. That he's walking on rubble there, of there walking into the mansion. Is he going to find his brother? I don't know. Helicopter lands, kind of happens pretty quick. We don't know when this is in the time frame. Is it before or after that? William Stryker returns, the asshole who gave um, Wolverine his claws and everything, but he's definitely a part of this episode or this movie. But is that the one who gives him the suits? You see the number in the top right corner there, so it has to be the suits from somewhere, some military uh, unit. Sweet jacket there, Nightcrawler looks pretty awesome there too, and the 80s are in full effect. You see they're all connected now, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, and Jean are there together. Are we going to see a little romance between them? Because that's a big part of the X-Men universe as a start in this movie. You got the whole cast there, Mystique, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Quicksilver, Beast, and Nightcrawler in the back. They're walking somewhere, Beast and Raven, I don't really, really want to call her Raven, she's Mystique. You know, are they going to get together? I don't know, probably not. There's a new Blackbird there, is that part of the strikers there office there too or is they underneath ground i don't i don't know is that, is that to survive at the mansion and where do they get the suits from it has to be from striker i would think there's no nightcrawler in this picture but he has to be there we see archangel rip up a big hole in there probably psylocke cuts it and he jumps in because um, you see psylocke and archangel now too so we don't see psylocke how he got his his change but he goes from having feather wings to metal wings um, they tear up the blackbird so the blackbird's going to go down they're in a holding cell with Quicksilver, so that has to happen after that, I would think. Um, I see four bodies in there. There's an explosion where they have to get out at some point. I don't know who got them, but probably Apocalypse puts them in some cell. You got Apocalypse and his four horsemen ready to destroy some city. Um, he wants to be the leader of the world or take over and destroy and dictate or whatever, but he gives Magneto a sweet new helmet. Magneto always wants to be a part of trying to change the world or some sort. In every movie, he's always part of it, too. He loves to throw that metal around as his power. Psylocke looks pretty awesome. Pretty hot there. Olivia Munn, of course. Storm looking good. Aurora Monroe. Just that haircut is kind of throwing me off. I don't know. I don't, how does he throw the blades? I, I might not understand that. Could someone answer that for me? Beast looking ready to fight. You know, he's a big character. I like Beast. I'm glad they bring him along there, too. I liked him in the cartoons. He's a smart guy. Nightcrawler, you're finally back. I don't know what happened to you. Does he get them out of the holding cell, maybe? Um, but you could see him rescuing them there as well. The suits look great overall, but I like the uh, cartoon you know, look of it on the comics and the TV show. You got Jean Grey about to use some telekinesis to throw some energy somewhere or stop something from, from going in on them or whatever. You had Cyclops doing his uh, blast there against Storm. So we'll see them fighting against each other. So you'll see them kind of paired up a little bit. Beast versus Psylocke, Cyclops versus Storm, and the Archangel was throwing him at Jean Grey and probably Nightcrawler. So they kind of divide up there a little bit. I don't know who Magneto is going against, but you see Archangel throwing blades at Nightcrawler and Jean, and she throws up the uh, rubble there to block the blades. It's pretty cool. It's going to be an awesome scene, I'm sure. Raving turn in, Raven turning into Mystique. She's kind of got the regular 
white face before she turns blue. Uh, she's hiding against Apocalypse, I would, I would assume, just based on the rubble for where it is to, to get away. She gets choked out here by Apocalypse. You know, she's got no chance for there, too. So someone has to come help her and save her. You know, I don't know what happens with the uh, four horsemen, but they have to go back to regular, I would assume. Apocalypse tries to destroy the world. He's doing something crazy here with his powers to go off and destroy everyone or brainwash everyone. The villains always want to destroy the world, see some explosions. The, is, are these nuclear missiles too? I'm not sure. We get to see bald Xavier, which is great because that's how we kind of saw him. I know I did growing up in the cartoons and the comics. That's what I grew up watching on there too. It looks pretty good. And I would assume he actually shaved his head. It looks too damn good to be not for, for CGI. Is that the ship that Apocalypse gets away with at the end? I know in the TV show and in the uh, really cartoon and everything that he got away a couple times and he kind of goes away and hides at some ship or somewhere. So that might be the end of the, of the movie. This is how I know Apocalypse in the cartoons, the 90s X-Men cartoons. How about you? Did you watch that? I know I did. It was pretty awesome. I used to love that cartoon every Saturday, man. It was pretty like clockwork. I used to love watching that. And still do. You can get them on DVD. This is just the DVD here as well. Now, are, are you excited for the movie? I know I am. Are you going to watch it? Tell us what you think. Do you like other uh, cartoons or X-Men movies or anything like that? And let us know.